What up, this is Jossio, you know what it is. We're back for another video. I'm pretty much gonna show you how to paint a license plate frame or a license plate holder. I'll put an image of it here so you can see what it looks like, so you know what we're talking about. License plate frame, license plate holder, one of the two, that's what it is. I painted on it, that's the point. So, let's talk about it. This project was actually pretty, it was pretty daunting because the surface, it's all about surface in this one. Gesso is your friend. Gesso is pretty much what turns a non-paintable surface into a paintable surface. You know, cause like, it's metal. At least the one that I have is, I think all of them are. But metal is what the license plate frame or holder is. That's the material. If you're gonna paint on it, you know, it's gonna be weird. You try it, just apply paint and see what happens. Cause it's not gonna work out too well for you. But, gesso, back to gesso. Gesso, you can apply many things. One of my really great friends, Jamie. Shout out to Jamie. Shout out to Jane was here. Shout out to Jane Creates. Check out her website, she's dope. Anyway, gesso. I use gesso to pretty much turn the surface paintable. I had to actually put multiple layers, let it dry, put multiple layers. And I ideally, I think I would have wanted to sand it down as well, but I didn't. C'est la vie. So, I ended up using it rough the way it is and it still worked out. I drew on top of it, which is also something that I am not sure I recommend at every step of the way because I'll tell you later. So I drew on top of it. The design was something that I took from the coat of arms. This is from my aunt. My aunt told me, hey, could you do this for me? I'm going to have this car or this fleet of cars. She's going to do this project with Uber. Thing. I don't know the details essentially she wanted that though and I was like okay I'm gonna figure out so I for the Trinidad coat of arms for, for the Trinidad license plate holder um, I decided to take the coat of arms and speaking of which as a Trinidadian tr Trinis Americans I, I, look I know I just switched and you, the universe is flip on all it because I sound indifferent but I realize what I'm talking about I talk about my aunt, I talk about Trinidad. Let us come back to reality. Come back to the to the source. You understand? So essentially, the coat of arms, I took the idea of it, I look at it, and I say what elements I could take from it and repurpose into this design. So as you can see, I take the leaves from the sides, I forget what the leaves represent, but you know. Uh, and then I take the, um, the three ships, the Columbus ships, and I take the waves, certain, and I take elements and I put it more at, at the bottom. It took a little while for me to kind of figure it out. I actually had to create a digital mock-up of what, I'm gonna, what, of what I was going to do. So, I did that. Took a little bit of time. Digital mock-ups, I think, for any of your creative projects, I think is very important. There's a lot of apps you can use now on your phone, on your computer, on your iPad, on your tablet, whatever you're going to do. Sorry Americans, I know I switched it up on you. Maybe I could put some captions for you if you don't understand what I'm saying. But essentially, I can switch it up and tell you that I, there are a lot of apps you can use like Procreate Pocket, Pixelmator, blah, blah, blah. And you can switch it up like I just did with the accent and use whichever app works for you. But the idea is that a lot of times it's easier for you to work with it that way because rather than putting the gesso on it, drawing, erasing, having to erase and redraw, you gotta understand, I didn't really have much room for error and I, I wasn't really trying to give myself much room for error. So I tried to do, take particular steps that would make it very certain that I knew exactly what was going to happen. Anyway, then I had to apply paint after all that. Applying paint was great when it comes to darker colors. Think about acrylic paint in particular, which is why I use it. I don't really deal with oil often, but I can speak about acrylic. Certain colors have, um, as my father used this morning, vis uh, certain levels of viscosity. And so certain ones are thicker than others, meaning they are a bit more opaque, or so they will cover the pen or pencil lines that you drew under them. So essentially, white is the weakest. I had to keep putting layers and layers and layers and layers of white to finally get ready black. So I have to do that over and over and over and over again. Red also was also weak and a couple other colors. It was difficult. Actually, I think pen shows through with acrylic, acrylic in general. Pen is difficult. Pencil also painful. Pen, I don't know what. I don't know all the details with the material. 
but multiple layers. So I had to go through that a bunch of times. I took my time with the project because it was very daunting. I was very scared the entire time. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was gonna work out really well. Uh, I pushed through, eventually got it all done, filmed it with this camera so you know I have some like cool depth of field shots or whatnot. And I used spray varnish at the end. I laid it down and just did some spray some spray varnish on top of it as a protective layer. And that works out. Sometimes you can use like um, a matte finisher or something like that that's you know more paintable and then spray it on top. Uh, everyone has their preferences. As long as there's some clear thing on top of your paint that protects it from the environment, you should be a-okay. I recommend trying it if you think it's a good idea or you, you, you don't know or you're scared. If you're scared or you're like, I don't know if I should paint on this surface or whatnot. Let's say it's like plastic or something or uh, mind you, not something you're gonna wear. Looking at my brother's uh, flip-flops right now and I'm like, nah, that's a bad idea to put just so on that or like shoes because the paint also needs to be flexible so you probably have to put in something else mixed in there but if it's something that's not gonna move or doesn't need to flex too much and it's not a surface that paint is gonna adhere to or stick to I recommend using gesso it's your best friend I'm sure I can find a video on gesso or somebody talking about gesso and put it up in the description of something if I do what I'm saying right now will be in the video. If I don't, you'll never hear this conditional statement. And that's it. Cool. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and comment below, letting me know what you enjoyed the most about this video and what you'd like to see me try or do. Also, share this video. You know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that likes watching this kind of content. Please share it with those people. Thank you for watching. Josio out.